Hey, Two Cities Church, Pastor Kyle here. We're back in Nehemiah. We're back in chapter three. Uh, Like we've seen these past few weeks, uh, Nehemiah cast a compelling vision. And one of the things vision does, it does a lot of things, but it unites people. It says, this is the problem. This is the solution. This is how you can be a part of it. At the end of chapter two, the people said, hey, we're all in. At the beginning of chapter three, we began to see that they were all in, especially the leaders and that everybody started where the wall was closest to them. Uh, And and whatever the need was, people were willing to meet it. Uh, And what we saw was, again, just uh, briefly, is is there was about 38 different people involved and about 42 different groups that were involved. Um, And and there are seven different gates in chapter three. There's like the valley gate, and uh, there's the sheep gate, there's the fountain gate, There's, there's all these different gates. Last week, we talked about the Sheep Gate, why that was so important. This week, I want us to pick up in verse 13 of chapter 3, and we see another gate that they repair. Here's what it says. This is uh, Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 13. It says, uh, they rebuilt, I'm starting about halfway through uh, verse 13. They rebuilt it, this is the valley gate, and they set its doors and its bolts and its bars, and they repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the dung gate. Now in verse 13, we're told about the dung gate. Uh, Now, what is the dung gate? You're like, that's a goofy name, but it's the perfect name for what it is because it was the gate, they named it for this reason. It was the gate where the trash and the waste and the things that were not necessary were taken out, they were thrown away or they were burned outside of that gate. So, so what happens as you rebuild the wall? Because that's what we're all doing in this season. We're rebuilding our spiritual walls. We're rebuilding our family or our church, or for some of you, business. For some of you, it means that you're in a whole new industry. Uh, for some of you, some of your life has changed. For others of you, a lot of your life has changed. Wherever you are, you need to build the wall, build the gates. The dung gate's incredibly important because it says, what are you going to get rid of as we get back to whatever this new normal is gonna be? What do you need to say, this was extra, this was excess, this was dung? And, and, and look, many of us, because we were forced for a season for our lives to be put on hold, to stop. Some of you realized, I was way too busy. My, I, I had way too many hobbies. I traveled way too much. Um, that there was way too much noise in my life. I had very little time for the Lord. And there are things in your life that were taken away that you don't need to bring back, right? You don't want to just get back to normal. We want better than normal. So that's the first thing. Uh, other things, sometimes there's an addiction. There are some things maybe you picked up in the season. You were home more, whatever. There are some things that as, as we get back to whatever the new normal is, that we want to say, I, I want to break these addictions. I want to start over. I want to say no to sin. I want to say yes to Christ. That's the rebuilding of the Dungate. That's what happens here. So they rebuild that, but then look in verse uh, 19. We're, we're, what happens in verse 19 is there's a transition. And up until this point, it basically says this guy or this group, uh, they rebuilt this section of the wall. And, and, and by the way, the word I told you last week is repair, which means they made it strong, they made it firm. And again, it wasn't their fault that the wall was broken down. They didn't break it down, just like it wasn't our fault that this pandemic happened. Um, but they said, even though it, it's not our fault, it's our responsibility. And so what they did was they, build a, they would rebuild a section of the wall. And in verse 19, I want you to see what happens. After they rebuild one section, it says this, uh, halfway through verse 19, when they were done, they repaired another section opposite the ascent to the army of the buttress. Here's the whole idea. Uh, What do you do once you've fixed one area of your life? Uh, By the grace of God, uh, you've rebuilt it. What do you do? Uh, You go to another section, you say, okay, uh, you you say, okay, thank God, by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the spirit of God, maybe with the help of community, I was able to rebuild a section of the wall and I saw God do something through me. And here's what I'd like the rest of my life to be about, rebuilding other sections of the wall and helping others. That's part of what you can do. After you rebuild your own section, you can go somewhere else and say, hey, look, I kind of got my finances together. Now I can help you. I learned how to read my Bible, pray, walk with the Lord. I can help you. I learned how to confess sin to my spouse, serve her, serve him, sacrifice, stop being selfish. I did that. Now I want to come and I want to help you do that only after I first done it myself. Which is why, if you go to the very end of this chapter, this chapter ends where it begins. Uh, though if you were to look at a map, what you'd see is the way they built the wall is, is they would go, they started in the north at the Sheep Gate, and they went counterclockwise all the way back to the Sheep Gate. Now, I want you to see this. At the very end, it says, in between the upper chamber, this is the final verse of the chapter, um, and the corner and the Sheep Gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants repaired. So what is it all about? It's, it's all about um, you need to finish the job. <laughs> 
Whatever you start, you should completely finish. And, and what we end up seeing here is, is that they have, this is an incredible story of what it means when, when a, an entire group of people, and we said last week it was all types of people, when an entire group of people are committed to rebuilding the wall, right? I mean, this is what Jesus Christ did. When we think about Jesus Christ, we think about that famous passage where uh, he's, he's talking to the Pharisees and he says to them, if you destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. But he wasn't talking about a physical wall. It says he was talking about his body. That what ended up happening was because of our sin, we are the ones who put Christ on the cross. We are the one who broke that wall down. That is our fault. That is our responsibility. But Jesus Christ said, I will be responsible for that which is not my responsibility. And I will rebuild that wall. That's what his death, that's what his resurrection was all about. And because Christ has built the ultimate wall, the wall that keeps us secure in our relationship with God, the wall that lets us worship the Lord again, we can, by the grace of God, rebuild the walls in our life and then help other people rebuild the walls in their life. A big part of it is knowing what needs to go out of this dung gate and not need to come back into my life because I don't wanna just go back to normal, I wanna be better than normal. Let's pray together. Um, Lord, that's what I pray for myself and for everybody listening here. Lord, that we would be committed in this season to saying no to many things. That there are things that need to leave, there are things that need to be done in this season and they don't need to come back. Lord, I pray for that. Lord, I pray for those of us who, when we're done rebuilding one section of our wall, that we would not be inconsistent or incomplete, but we would build another section, Lord. Lord, and I pray that we would not stop uh, rebuilding till it's all done, Lord. We thank you that we don't, we're not trying to rebuild uh, to earn favor with you. You've already rebuilt the greatest wall. That's what happened in your death and your resurrection, Lord. We want to rebuild the walls in our life in response to that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.